Hi, this is Ron Nutter, and welcome to another edition of Tech Bytes with Ron Nutter. Today, we're going to be looking at how to use a smartphone with the PepLink B1 5G as your WAN connection. This is very straightforward. A few little tips and tricks on getting this to work. Let's go ahead and get started. Today, we're going to be talking about how to use your smartphone as a PepLink B1 5G WAN connection. The first thing we're going to go over is USB tethering versus hotspot. There's similarities, but there is a difference. So we need to make sure that we both have, are operating from the same understanding. The next thing we'll do is go over the items that you're gonna to need to have to get this all to work. We'll then next touch on configuring your smartphone. And then lastly, we'll deal with the PepLink B1 5G configuration. Now this is an area we need to go over a little bit before we get too far down the rabbit hole and that's talking about the difference in the context that this video is working with of hotspot versus tethering. Now hotspot with the way I've been using it is you basically turn on the wireless functionality in a slightly different way on your smartphone and all the devices that you have and all being a relative word because I wouldn't try to run past about probably between three to five devices and there should be more information with your smartphone as to how many it will tolerate. Just as importantly your service provider because they may have a limitation of how many devices will be supported. You're basically going to be really hitting that device hard because it's going to have to act as a router bringing in the existing connections from either 2.4 or 5 gigahertz or you may have it locked down to one just one band depending on how the manufacturer of your phone has implemented things and then you'll go out through the cellular connection and when I've done it that phone has a tendency to get kind of warm because you're you're pumping everything it's got to do this with USB tethering it's very different think of it for those of you who have had to use dial-up modems, you, this will be an easy analogy. That's essentially what USB tethering is. You will plug a USB cable from your smartphone, which on the Samsung Galaxies I've done this with, it's a USB-C, and then you will go to the USB-C port on the front of the PEP link. Until you've got that cable in place, you won't see any of the configurations, and we'll, we'll show that here in just a second. Well, to get everything started, there's going to be three things you're going to need to have. You'll either need to have the PepLink B1 or the PepLink B1 5G. The only difference between the two is the B1 5G has the cellular modem in it. But that, you know, we're not using that particular part of it. So this will work with, with either model. You're going to then need to have a smartphone. And it should be one of the newer ones. Now, I've done this with both the uh well i've got two different galaxies and they're several years apart in terms of age but there what you'll be looking for is usb tethering within the settings portion of the phone and if you've got that then you're pretty much good to go the only thing you have to watch is how your carrier interprets the tethering traffic if it's counted as a separate service item or if it's just bundled into your data plan and then you'll need some sort of, phone, of USB cable between the phone and the PepLink. And until the two are connected, you're not going to be able to do any configuration. Because the, without the connection being there, the PepLink won't show you WAN, uh, USB tethering for WAN, and your phone won't let you turn it on. So let's get started. Okay, now we're looking at the setup screen on my uh, Samsung Galaxy S21. And you see where it shows USB tethering now. You see where it's found in the menus of mine. Whoops. Uh, where it's found in the menus of mine. And USB tethering is there, but it's grayed out. And it says kind of faintly that no USB devices are detected. Okay. Well, through the magic of technology, I will go ahead and plug in the PEP link and give it a bit and voila, there we go. So now we can turn it on. So you'll want to turn on USB tethering and then you will see the difference from the phone, uh, from the PEP link side once we switch over to that screen. This is all you should have to touch on your smartphone. All the rest occurs within the PEP link. Okay, now we've switched over to the PepLink. You can see I've already been using the, the Wi-Fi's WAN, but to make sure we've got everything nice and happy, I'm going to disable that. There's no USB WAN option available, but we'll plug in the phone. 
and we'll verify it. Still not seeing it. Okay, just took it a second. It wanted to bring it up on its own. And I'm just looking at the phone here very quickly. And tethering got turned back off when we disconnected. So now it's happy. And we should get something back here in just a second. There we go. For some reason, it brings it up as priority two. I guess, well, yeah, no sane person would run it as priority one unless it was an emergency. And well, and then it, it doesn't hurt to leave this out there. And that way, you would have it ready to go as soon as you need it. Now, it's going to take it a little bit for it to say that it's all happy. And it's, it's gotten an IP address from the PEP link. And it says connected. Well, let's go see what happens here. If we've got something to talk to on the outside and there you go and just to, and that was all we had to do at a very basic level and just to push my luck and I'm, I'm on uh, visible which is the prepaid on Verizon and I've been pleased with the performance so let's go ahead and see what we've got in terms of uh, yeah we'll allow this time and that's not bad for download and that, considering that's going straight over cellular and I'm, I'm not exactly in an optimal situation in terms of antenna placement, the smartphone's just laying on a tray table and I'm getting comparable upload to what I would get over uh, my cable internet connection, which I'm, once you've had a certain uh, fiber optic provider, it's hard to go back. But So there you see, there's the test of getting it up all running, and that's really all it takes. It's, you know, you couldn't be any, any simpler, and that's uh, kudos to the folks at Peplink for maybe making it that easy. So we click on USB, you, you see there are some options there where we can really dial in under the hood. I've yet to have a good reason to make those changes and if we click 166.25, okay, tethering, it tells you the DNS. So it really is, it's that simple. So in an emergency, this is handy to know that you've got that kind of option available that you can quickly throw it on your smartphone until your internet provider of choice uh, is able to figure out the problems. So it's, you know, it's, it's at least an option and it's a good thing in this day and time to have those kind of options. Well, you've seen how straightforward it is to get your smartphone as a WAN connection up with the Peplink. If you got value from this video, I'd really appreciate if you'd click on that like button because that goes a lot into helping other people find out what's going on. If you haven't joined the channel, if you would do that, I would really appreciate this well because the more subscribers I get allows some other things to uh, come down from the folks at YouTube that I can use to help get the word out to even more people. Thank you for watching and we'll see you the next time.